Everyone makes mistakes, so let's fix those that I made. Alright, fans, that's back in Intelligia once more, and in this tutorial we're going to be fixing some mistakes. This is going to be a tutorial for both Forge and Fabric. Of course, like always, the timestamps are linked in the description below, so you can just jump to either Forge or Fabric. We're going to start with Forge right here. So there's a few things that I got wrong. First of all, and that is actually quite an important one, in your tutorial mod class or your main mod class, what you want to do is you want to take the client setup event and we want to actually move that. So in our case, we want to move this to the mod event client bus events. Kind of a weird name here, but that's going to be okay. If you don't have this, you can just create a new class. And what's very important is that, that it has the add mod event bus subscriber with your mod ID, the mod bus as its event bus subscriber bus, and the value is dist.client. So this can only be called on the client. So what we want to do with our client setup method that it contains the FML client setup event right here, we just want to select it all so I can click right here, hold shift, click here, press control X to cut it out. We'll not worry about the error for the time being. Go into our new class over here. I'm going to paste it in with control V. And then what we'll do is we'll add the add subscribe event right here. We'll make this a public and a static method. So public static void client setup final FML client setup event. In our tutorial mod class, we can then delete this one right here and then it should be fine. Then the client setup event is going to be okay. The reason why we need this is because the main class is actually called on both the server and the client. And even though the event should only be called on the client, there are some instances where some Java mumbo jumbo basically can mess all of this up and have the client stuff called on the server and then the server will crash because you can't call any of those methods on the server. Right, that was number one. Number two, we have a way easier way of getting your tags that is in the dowsing rod, right? So where we made it so that you can basically check for the valuable item with a custom tag and we did it like this. Now this, granted, does work, but it looks not only hideous, but it really does overcomplicate the matter because we can modify this a little bit. So what we're going to do is instead of taking the block here, we're going to take the block state. So we're just going to rename this to state over here. And then in the method right here, so the best way to do it is save the block state right here, block state instead of calling the get block here immediately. And then we'll just do get block over here and dot get block over here. So we've just changed the block variable right here to the block state variable and moved the get block calls to here and here. And now we can just call state dot is mod tags dot blocks dot dowsing rod valuables. And yes, that's all that we need to do. That looks way better than the previous version. Right, another issue, and that is with the mod armor item. So the mod armor item, of course, is one of my custom classes that I've created, and it has gone through a few different iterations, of course. But one of the main things that is important here is the has correct armor on method, because we're casting whatever is inside of the armor slot of the player to an armor item. Now, if this contains a pumpkin or an elytra, well, goodbye Minecraft and goodbye world because the world is going to be gone forever. This is, of course, something we don't want. So I have changed it around to this. So now we're just going through all of the armor pieces and checking, hey, can we actually cast it to an armor item? And if one of those can't be cast to an armor item, so if it is not an instance of an armor item, then we're immediately going to return false because we know we don't have the correct armor on in that case. I suggest changing it to this as well, and then you should be fine. Right, last but not least, we have another one for the event that is in the mod event bus events for the custom particles. So the particle factory registry event should also only be called on the client. So once again, we're going to select it, press control, x to cut out and then we're going to go into the mod event client bus events and we're going to paste it in right here so once again if i middle mouse button click on this you can actually see microforge client event it is a client event so just making sure that this is called on the client just in case if there's any weirdness usually you don't want to call client only classes on the server. Now those are the four issues that should be fixed for Forge. Now let's move on to Fabric. Right, so here we are with the Fabric mistakes and luckily there are only two of them, both in the items. So first of all, we have the dowsing rod item and that is once again with the tag over here because this craziness is definitely a little bit too much, I would argue. Now what we can do is luckily we can change this to a block state and then just change this to state. And we'll deal with this in just a moment. And now we can change it right here as well. So instead of saving a block, what we're gonna do is we're gonna save a block state over here. So this is the block below. So we're just going to remove the dot get block over here and then calling the get block on the states right here and right here. 
So we've just changed the block variable right here to a block state variable, and we're just getting the blocks once here and once here, and that's going to be fine. Passing in the block state, because when we have the state, what we can do is we can just call state dot is in mod tags dot blocks dot dousing rod detectable blocks. And that's all that we need to do right here. And then secondly, the mod armor item, we have the has correct armor on right here. So this works perfectly fine. However, once you actually add an elytra to the mix, you can actually cast an elytra to an armor item because it is in fact not an armor item. So what we just want to do is we just want to add this for loop over here so that we're basically checking, hey, is the actual item that is inside of the armor slot actually an armor item? And if one of them is not, then we're immediately going to return false because we know we don't have the correct armor on anyway. So those are the two fixes for fabric and that is already all of the fixes that you need to do. That was pretty much it for this and also the 118 series. Next tutorial we're also going to take a look at how you can build your mod into a jar file but that would then conclude the 118 series and then we're going to update to 119. So I hope you found this useful and you learned something new and I'll see you in the next tutorials. Many thanks also to my lovely Patreon supporters for supporting the channel and I will see you all in the next video. So yeah. <laughs>